Hello there, everyone. Welcome to a new Let's Play with me, your host, Tim. And today, we're going to start playing through mainframe defenders for a bit. There will be some prep here that you can skip by going to the comments section down below in case you don't want to hear me prattle on about what mainframe defenders is, why we're playing it, how far I got in it, and any special stuff that I'll be doing while we're playing through the game. So let's get to it. By the way, that link will jump you to where we hit new game. And then there will be another timestamp, which also will jump you past me trying to explain what we're looking at for a little bit when we hit new game, and skipping some of the instructions that I feel would be important to you if you like what you see and decide to pick this game up. So first, however, what on earth is mainframe defenders to me? Why are we playing it? So I've got this massive backlog of games on GOG and Steam that I am trying to slowly chew through. And occasionally, I find a gem within that backlog that really grips me. And Mainframe Defenders turns out to be one of those games. Uh, maybe no one has known this, but Underrail was such a game as well. A few years ago, going through my backlog, I fired that game up and like, what is this? I should play this. And I loved it. And Mainframe Defenders is another game which I have quickly fallen in love with. I have beaten this game three times, and I have failed two of my times to get through the game. Mainframe Defenders is a squad-based, turn-based tactical game in which you are presented with a different variety of missions. You select one, and then you try to accomplish that task. The mission will present you with the rewards for completing that task before you go out on it, and tell you what type of mission you are doing, along with how difficult that mission will be in relation to the tier that you are trying to complete, and the amount of enemies that you will be fighting in the mission. It is a roguelike game as well. There's no saving, so once you once you lose someone, <laughs> you, uh, you get them back, assuming you're able to still complete the mission, and then you can repair them back up to full strength afterwards. You lose all of your squad, that's the end of your run. Like some games where you gain experience points upon failure, this game works that way as well. If we lose a run, you're then given some research points and some unlock points, and these are used to give you other units you can use in the future, and research points are used to have other types of equipment show up during your run. It's a great game. It reminds me very much of other games such as Felsu Arbiter's Mark or Final Fantasy Tactics with how the game is played. Your units will have a, a movement and an action and sometimes a second movement, or even multiple actions that they can perform after moving or before moving. It's a lot of fun, it's very tricky, and I very much like the game. I can't think of anything else really to talk about. I have beaten the game a few times now, and will be playing a new game on normal mode. At the end of the mission, if we win, I will go ahead and read the email that we unlocked, and in fact, I'll read all the emails I currently have unlocked. You get one new email, which explains the lore of the game and the world of what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it. So as you beat the game more often, you get to find out more of what's actually going on and why your squad is doing what it is doing. So I think with all that said, I'm going to go check out my recording. If everything is good, we'll be set to go. Give me a few seconds. All right, everyone. I got done talking at exactly the right time because the music stopped. So no one will be able to tell how many times I failed to do this next part because it's going to sound amazing. All right, so we're all done explaining why we're playing the game. Let's go ahead and start playing it. Time for new game. The first thing we're presented with over here on the left is which units we want to take with us to comprise of our squad. When you first play this game, you're going to have six units available to you, and I think they're the same six units. Because we're starting a new game and I'm recording it, I will choose from amongst those six units that I know you are probably starting with in the game. We'll start with the Atlas, which is a mid-ranged sniper DPS type of unit. The Brigadine, which is a short-ranged tank, uh, a ranged unit that has a burst weapon. The Mechanic, which doesn't do very much damage with its needle, but it's, the needle has a low action point cost, so it can fire it multiple times a turn, and, and it can heal another robot if need, uh, or another squad member if need be. You have access to the Paladin, which is an even shorter range unit, but is able to move a second time during its turn after it attacks, for example, 
And also, its attack immobilizes a target, allowing you to get away from it or hide around uh, co a corner or something of the sort. You'll have access to a Synapse, which is a debuff unit, which can keep units alive by reducing the damage output of enemies. And it puts a dot effect on them. And the Viper, which is all about dot effects, and starts with a little bit of armor. You will have access to the A version of all of these when you start your new game. In order to have you guys follow along, I will select from amongst these units that you also would have if you were to buy this game based on how the awesome video that you are at that you are watching at the moment. Next, you have to choose whether or not enemies will be upgradable. I think this might affect the amount of unlock points and research points you get at the end of a mission, but I am not sure. With this checked, some enemies will be randomly upgraded as you play the game. The upgrades will always make these enemies tougher, and are chosen, to my best of my knowledge, randomly from the various upgrades that they can have. Not every enemy will be upgraded, but later on it seems like a whole heck of a lot of them are. We'll leave it checked, because I have beaten the game a few times now with this checked, and I think it will be more entertaining for you guys at home to watch me fight even tougher enemies. We have a difficulty to select as well. The first time I played through the game, I was able to win on easy. This last statement, but it will still be challenging, is 100% accurate, by the way. If you're playing this game for the first time, I would recommend you play on easy so you get the hang of it, along with you get a general idea of what the upgrades will be as you play through the game, and what equipment or items will show up. But I've beaten it on easy, and I've beaten it twice on normal, so we're going to stick with normal. I have some research points. I'm going to skip explaining these at the moment, and I'm not going to spend any of them either. Let's go ahead and hit start game. Oh, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hit start game. Alright everyone, welcome to the quest or mission selection screen. There's a bunch of information over here on the left that I think we should look at before we begin our attempt to complete the mission. First, all of these over here are the missions that we are allowed to select from. Whenever we're ready, we will, we will select one of them to attempt to get the rewards listed and hit start mission. This tells you what the objective is of the mission. This tells you Mm, I'll, let's see if I can describe this properly. How many enemies you will be fighting in the mission and how tough they will be. Now, I know this is a bit odd because we already chose a difficulty when we hit New Game. The difficulty that we chose when we hit New Game determines the amount of hit points the enemy has, how much heat it will have, the armor they have, how much damage they do. With every rank of difficulty that increases, slightly increasing these amounts. This difficulty determines, I think, how many of those enemies we will be up against, and or how many special upgradable units will be present, and I think there's also a chance with a higher difficulty setting that you might encounter units from a higher tier present ready to fight you. So if you want the easiest time possible, you want to stick with an easy mission. As we proceed through these quests and complete them, the easy missions will drop off, and we will be left only with normal missions to try to accomplish instead. Next, over here for the mission rewards, all the missions will reward us with matter. Matter is the currency of this game. You will spend matter to upgrade your squad members and to purchase equipment which is available to you in the fabricator between each mission. We'll take a look at that in a few minutes, or seconds as it were. For the items you can get as mission rewards, you can get anywhere from zero to four of them. I think the items which are shown to you are random. I don't think, like, uh, it, it, and the matter as well, I'm pretty sure, is completely random with, um, when you're looking at it. So, you might see, like, a really difficult mission that has almost no matter and no decent rewards, and be scratching your head while you look at a, a much easier one, which has more matter and better rewards than that one. 
with one extra exceptions. Generally, the harder difficulty missions have better rewards and more matter rewarded for completing them. Okay, so with this described, we can also click on list of items. This just shows every single item that you have unlocked in the entire game. If you want to, just go ahead and look at all of them and determine what they do and if you have a better one of these unlocked or something of that sort. We can abandon the run to throw in the towel and immediately just get rewarded for whatever amount of missions and enemies that we killed, which will give us more unlock points and research points. We can take a look at all the random tips if we wish, go back to the main menu here, but oh, we can also select our start mission when we're ready to, to, to do one of these missions, and finally, we can take a look at our squad. So, uh, these are the four members that we selected before we began the mission. Let's go ahead and take some time to look at these guys. I'll try my best to explain how this all works. So, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is rename these guys, because a recent patch, like I think two months ago or so, uh, has added that opportunity for us to, to do this, and I think we're going to do it. Let's go ahead and name one of these Tira, after Tira Spark Caster. We'll rename Brigadine Trimus, of course. And of course, he's got to be light blue, because that's what he is. Mechanic A, you'll be Aegis. And we'll change your color as well. Uh, let's make you a little off uh, darker blue. And Synapse A, that'll be me. And I like being red, so we'll choose this. I like being Sherbert colored. All right, so what else can we describe before we get look at the stats? So these are your units, obviously. You can click on their upgrades, and you can spend matter to take upgrades. Be warned, if you click the right or left mouse button on an upgrade, you will take that upgrade. So be sure you want the upgrade before you click on it. If you just want to look at them, just just look. Don't make, make sure you don't touch a button. We'll take a look at their upgrades a little bit in more detail in a few minutes. Just know that that's what this button does. All the upgrades for your different squad members are unique to that type of squad member. This um, Mechanic A has these upgrades. I think the Mechanic B might have the same upgrades, but I don't know. I don't think I've chosen a rank uh, of Type B unit yet. I'll click on these really quick, so you can take a peek at them. A lot of this might not make any sense to you at the moment. But, why not? We'll, we'll take a look at it anyway, just to give you guys an idea that, yes, they're, they're all different from each other. Okay. Over here, by the way, is our fabricator. Between each mission, these will be here, and they are, well, uh, I'm sorry, that was a really bad way of phrasing it. The, the items available in the fabricator are randomized whenever you come back from a mission. I think the number of them as well is random. We have six here at the moment. We could come back and there could be like nine items here. I think that the further you go in the game, when you're finally in tier three, like the last two uh, missions, there's only like four items here as well. So I think the numbers eventually do go down, but I'd, I'm not sure. I don't haven't played the game that much yet. You, are, you can spend your matter to produce one of these, if you wish. Or actually, you can produce multiples of them. We have 300 matter, so we could produce two adaptive sensors if we really want to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lock two items. You are allowed to lock up to two items from the fabricator. When you go on your mission, the items that you locked will not be re-rolled. All the other ones will be. Okay, so I really like the adaptive sensor, and I would like that with Tira very much for reasons you'll see very soon. I'm just going to go ahead and lock this at the moment, and I wouldn't mind having the ar another armored plating in my squad, so I'm going to lock this as well. These are two items I will probably aim for to see if I can get them at some point. All right, so... With this matter, matter, we could spend that right now on some of these upgrades. We could also instead spend that matter on upgrading some of our units over here instead. Let's go ahead and spend some of our matter on a single upgrade. Lottery is a... The, the Synapse A squad member is a debuffing member with its weapons. But it's kind of a... 
a passive buff bot with its upgrades. As you can see here, squad members gain one armor. That will give all of us one armor, I think including a uh, lottery here. Or that we could repair one hole each turn. Both of these upgrades cost 100 matter each. Once we take one of these upgrades, we cannot take the other from the same level. I just spent the hundred matter, and Lottery has taken squad units gain one armor. Let's go ahead and produce one of these after all. So, I think we'll go ahead and produce this adaptive sensor to help us out to start. Let's go ahead and hit produce. 150 matter is consumed, and the item goes into our squad items. I think you can hold more squad items than the space lists here. I think you can just, I think this becomes a, uh, a slider, and you can go down to look at other items. To equip an item onto your characters, select a character, and then drag the item over into their items. Your squad members can have at most four items equipped on them. No more than four. So you have to choose kind of carefully what you want for their items. It's actually, I really like the constraints in the game. It's really hard to choose sometimes from amongst what's available to you and what you want to do with that character. It's like, if only there was one more slot, oh, it'd be so nice. But, oh, it's, it's tough to make some of these decisions based on the limited amount of inventory that they have. All right, so that's the basics of it, everyone. Oh, and by the way, you can see here as well that all these items can be disassembled and you'll be able to get a fraction of the matter that they cost to build. Now, why did I build the Adaptive Sensor for Tira? Well, let's take a look at Tira's items. We'll do that with all these characters really quick before we get going. Tira has a Ray Gun. This item fires once. It does 20 through 22 damage, and it has a 40% chance to crit. And if it crits, it does an extra 10 damage at range 8. It's a really nice weapon. It costs 3 action points to fire it. This is super important to know. Because the only reason Tira can fire it is because she has this heavy reactor. Your bots only have two action points normally. They can get more through unlocking them with some other upgrades if the bot has that upgrade available to them. Or they can gain it through an item in the game, like this heavy reactor. Anyway... Whenever we fire a weapon, we will gain heat. I think it's best that I just say that at the moment, and we'll talk about that more when we're in the game itself and beginning to shoot at them. But just, as you can see, the ray gun has a 40% chance to crit, just because it's the ray gun. The adaptive sensor now gives Tyr an 80% chance to crit, and increases the crit damage that she'll do. So she'll do 34 through 36 points of damage now rather than 20 through 22 when she crits. So I really like seeing Adaptive Sensor early on for her. Trimus is the only other one who can take an upgrade at the moment, but I don't like that other upgrade, so we're going to pass on it. Let's go ahead and get started with the mission now, shall we? And I already see what mission I want to do. This one. It's going to be tough! This is going to be very tough to start because it's eliminate the infected node, but we're going to go ahead and do it. I really like having a Morana, on Lottery, and I wouldn't mind having an unclocking kit on Aegis. So we're going to go for this. We also earned 58 matter, which is a decent amount of matter to earn so early on in the game. So, with this selected, let's go ahead and start. And then I'll explain everything that occurs to us in the game. Network traffic analysis indicates infected server nearby. Server disposal will delay the spread of the virus. Alright everyone, here we are. I think the game randomly chooses who is spawning on what spots for the different missions that you start in. For our infected server in this map, in this room that was randomly generated for us, this is how we're starting. If we started a different mission, we might be set up completely differently, just as a heads up. You're not always guaranteed to have the units uh, deployed in the spots that you see them here. This is important because units block movement and line of sight for other units. Tira cannot walk through Aegis. 
she's got to go around Aegis to reach these spots. So if I want her to move up, for example, I will want Aegis moved first, to order so that Tira can move up a little more. The game shows you the movement that your characters will be able to go. There is, uh, but when you select that unit, right-clicking undoes the movement option. There is no undo option in the game. You move to a spot, you've moved there. Make sure that's what you want to do before you do it. It's like uh, the new XCOM series, or even the old XCOM series, I suppose, in that regard. There's no saving mid-game either, or undoing or quick saving. You're stuck with it. Next, let's look over here on the left for our objectives. We have to destroy one infected node. The infected node applies interference each turn. What does this mean? Well, because I've played this game before, I know what interference is. Actually, interference is on the weapon that Lottery is using at the moment. It's going to apply one interference to us. This is going to reduce the damage of all of our weapons by 30%. 5% and it will keep being applied to us every turn until we find and destroy the object in this mission which is causing it and that is our objective find that thing and destroy it we can see that the enemy squads will begin to activate and move around hunting us in two turns I believe that they always know exactly where you are and will be coming for you we can also see that reinforcements will start to spawn in in 12 turns. If we haven't found and eliminated this node in 12 turns, the, once that 12th turn occurs, four new enemies will spawn almost right on top of us in the room that we tend to, that our units will be in. And then the next turn, they will be activated and begin attacking us. The reinforcement timer will reset to about four more turns before we have to deal with new reinforcements. You never want to deal with reinforcements. On easy, I was because I didn't understand too much of the game. But now, on normal, I have yet to fight reinforcements because it's it's gonna go bad really quickly if you have to deal with reinforcements. There's some other information here that I feel like we should talk about really quick. You can see that units have these different symbols on them. A green square and a red square. The green square means that the unit has movement left. The red square means that the unit has action points left. Oh, sure, uh, let's do this as well. So when I hit, uh, so with Aegis selected, I can see the needle is hotkeyed to selection one. The repair kit is hotkeyed to selection two. So I'm hitting the one hotkey which shows me everything that my unit currently has line of sight to. If I hit Q, uh, I'm sorry, if I, is that right? Oh, uh, apparently, can I hit Q on you? Okay, yes, yep. So if I hit Q on a unit, it will show me the range of their weapons before I start moving them to give you an idea of where it is they might be able to hit. As you can see, as I move them around, it will also be showing me, hey, your weapons, if you have any, for in this case the auto cannon, this is its range. If you have multiple weapons on a character, it will show you those different weapon ranges via different colors as a heads up. So, back to Aegis. We have a needle here, and I'm going to go ahead and fire it in order to clear a little bit of this garbage out of the way, uh, in particular walls. Everything, or I think most things, are destroyable in this game. So I'm going to clear an entrance so that my other bots can move up a little easier without having to navigate around Aegis here. Every time I fired that weapon, Aegis has gained a little bit of heat. Every turn, your units will burn heat up as well. In this case, we can see Aegis will burn 10 heat off a turn. If your unit doesn't do anything, uh, or rather, if your unit doesn't spend any action points, they will burn another 20 heat off of themselves. If a unit goes overheated, they start to take a lot of damage depending upon how overheated they are. I think you can go up to 300% over your normal heat maximum, in which case you're taking, you're taking close to 30 points of damage, practically destroying yourself in the process. You can see how much heat a unit has from this screen by the red bar on the unit. The blue bar is your life. Okay, so with all that said, let's go ahead and move Trimus up a bit. A 
Lottery? And Tira. I've moved all my units. I could now decide to fire from Trimus. You don't have to take the actions of someone after you've moved them. You can move one unit, fire another, then move that unit, then move a third and fire that third unit, then go back to the first one and fire, then move and shoot with the fourth. Your units have an action and a movement. You can take them in any order that you wish. You cannot interrupt your movement to fire, though. There is a big exception to that, and that is if your squad member has a second move, which occurs after your first move. But my units don't have that at the moment, so we won't worry about it very much. All my units have uh, done moving. I'm not going to use any more of their actions. Let's go ahead and end our turn. Now, I don't know where that infected node is, but I do know one or two things. Do you see this here? See these X's? This means that this is untraversable. We cannot go that way. It does look like there's another room up here. I could have fired through both of these walls to move up into this room. Maybe what we're looking for is up there. But I decided to move the unit squad up here because I didn't notice this at first. In any case, uh, all I'm trying to say is I don't know where this thing is. But I do know that there's no, there's no walls, uh, no other rooms behind this area. The item could be down here. It could be up here. I don't know. We're going to go up here to start. Our first enemy unit, everyone. That's a heater. We'll take a look at it after we get after we get done moving everybody. I think we'll also have Trimus fire. Just to clear out some more wall. Okay, our first enemy unit, everyone. Let's take a look at it together. So first off, hovering over the unit shows its current movement range, what it, where it can move, and its current uh, target range, what it has line of sight to. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to tell uh, if it was to move here. I can't then see where it could reach if it was standing here. It's just, unfortunately, the game doesn't let me do that. But uh, in any case, we can take a look at it. So, all enemy units, to my knowledge, have one action point, and other weapons always take one action point to use them, or their items, depending upon the creature that it is. We can see their hit points. Once it's reduced to zero, obviously it's destroyed. This creature has four armor, 100 possible heat, burns 20 heat per turn, moves six movement a turn, and is armed with this heater cannon. It does very little damage, only two through three. It can't crit, it has a decent range for an enemy unit. It inflicts 20 heat to itself, and, but it inflicts 30 heat upon dealing damage. I need to explain what upon dealing damage means because I learned it doesn't mean what I thought it meant. This doesn't mean upon the unit it fires upon sustaining damage. This means upon the weapon being fired on an enemy. Even if this weapon inflicted no damage to Trimus, for example, with his five armor, four for that starting armor, plus one for Lottery's uh, passive that he gave him. Trimus will still take 30 heat. Keep that in mind. A weapon that does zero damage still applies any effects it had to the target. This guy's armed with armor plating, giving him plus two armor. Now, the squad units will awaken soon in one more turn, so he's not going to activate this turn. Next turn, he will. However, if you, if we enter the room he was in, or got within, I think it's like five or six spaces of him, he would activate, and everything else in the room with him would also activate, and we'd have to worry about dealing with them maybe a turn in advance. Keep that in mind. All right. Oh, I suppose I should show you something else as well now. So all of our units now have a status effect on them. Interference. It's not improved interference, it's just normal interference, and so all of our damage is being reduced by 35%. It's going to last two turns, and as we can see as well, it's, um, we got two stacks of it. I don't know 
what the stacks matter for interference. I don't think they do. It always applies to 35% damage reduction. It's not per stack of interference. All right, uh, we're done moving. I'm done shooting. Let's go ahead and end our turn. Something activated. Okay, so we got one group of enemies that activated. I see a heavy spider and a Praetorian. Let's take a look at these guys really quick. Heavy spider. The armed spider laser here does decent damage for a tier 1 unit, 6 through 8. It doesn't have good range, range of 5, so it's got to get a little closer to us. It applies prop damage to the target. What that does is that slows a unit down. It can't move a second time, and it loses two movement. It also uh, lasts three turns. It also gains sensors damaged. Any weapon damage that it something uh, that a, the target tries to do can never be more than 20 if it manages to hit the target with this. So in other words, it slows a creature down and it weakens its damage potential if the damage potential was very high. It also has isolated internals. This means it takes less damage from dot effects, such as uh, plasma residue, corrosion, or any uh, or uh, internal damage, which does... Uh, these all are dot effects that it can affect an enemy. We also have a Praetorian. The Praetorian has a Praetorian cannon. Doesn't do that much damage, doesn't add that much heat. It applies corrupted data to the target, though. This is a dot effect. It does very little damage. One per stack of corrupted data on a target. It lasts two turns. But anyone who has this dot effect on them cannot uh, be healed. Or rather, cannot restore whole. They can still have abilities cleansed. They can still have... Um, they can still have heat removed, depending upon the item you were using to do the healing. But they can't actually have their whole restored. It doesn't say here, but I believe corrupted data can also not be cleansed. When we get hit with some of these new of these passives, we'll take a look at our characters and double check that. He's also got Dominator armor, which means that we can never damage him for more than 20 points of damage per thing that tries to damage him. If he's corroded or corrupted, and he's got like 60 potential damage of corrosion on him, he'll never take more than 20. If a unit hits him with a massive crit for 50 damage, he only takes 20 of it. Okay, so let's get started. I'm expecting there to be one more unit somewhere in this room. And it doesn't matter. We need to get in here. So, I'm thinking... We've got four armor? So we're only doing four through five damage because of the interference. We could use Agents' Repair Kit in order to remove the interference from Trimus to have him do a little more damage with his cannon. Or we could actually use that on our ray gun. I think I'd rather use it on Tira's ray gun. So let's go ahead and start by doing that. Tira wasn't damaged, but as you can see, her magnetic interference is cleansed, and now she does 20 through 22 damage again. We're going to move Trimus right up to here. Two enemies. So the other enemy is a... I should know what this is called. It begins with an A. Acrid. Yep. Acrids. They move four, and they have a second movement, letting them move another five spaces afterwards. They burn a ton of heat each turn, 27. Their laser doesn't do much damage, and it's only single fire, but whenever it damages an opponent, it gains two damage, up to a maximum of eight. So as he continues to fire this, this is going to get stronger and stronger, so we definitely would like to kill it if we can. We're going to hold off firing with Tribus at the moment. We'll move... Tira, if I move you here, we can fire. Oh! Oh, come on, game! Well, I misclicked, so that's going to be a real uh, fight in the butt. I effectively cleansed Tira for no reason. 
We could have killed this this turn, and now it's not gonna happen. That sucks, game. I hate you. That really freaking sucks. All right, well, let's let's play it, Tim. Play it out. Let's move up here, and we're gonna chase down the heater. Run you up here, Trimus. Uh, we'll let the heater go now. It's gonna die in a turn or two. We'll start working on the uh, acrid. Move you up here. Fire on the heavy spider. We can just damage output, apply more acid to it. Okay, so the heater is going to die on its turn, so I don't have to worry about it any longer. Our repair kit is working again, so we could fix Trimus and have Trimus try to destroy the heavy spider, or Trimus could uh, Trimus kill this now. We'll do 12 to 15 total damage to it. Uh, let's not do that. Okay, let's have Aegis repair Trimus. And then Aegis are going to move over here. I want to see if the thing we want to destroy is in this room. Trimus will go ahead and fire on the heavy spider. He may kill it right away. Okay, it's dead. So he didn't destroy it, but the little bit of acid damage that we did with Lottery will do the damage necessary to kill it. Uh, I guess I should show this as well. Do you see how some of the heater's life is in red over by its hole, which will be up here? That's the amount of damage it's going to take at the start uh, of its turn. And it's going to die, so I don't have to really worry about it. We're going to move Trimus up here. Let's move you here, Tira. And we'll fire on the Arachnid. Hey, we crit! Wonderful. Quite dead. Lottery, we don't need to have you do anything this turn. So you're not going to do so. I'm very professional, everyone. There we go. And Lottery's just going to sit there in order to burn off some of this heat he's acquired. We have more enemies on the way. Okay, well hopefully we can ignore them. Aegis, let's move you in. There it is, everyone! That's what we're here for. It's just outside of the range for Trimus. Let's destroy this. Kira, in you go. Begin working it. Lottery... Let's move you up a bit. So I don't want Lottery being fired at by the uh, Acrid. So we want him behind a, a wall. Let's put him here. And he'll fire on the Praetorian. Trimus, let's move you in the way. Now, note that for this guy's armor, the Dominator armor, it's any instance of damage dealt, not per turn. If Trimus's auto cannon was dealing 15 through 20 damage with each shot, he fires three times, all three of those shots would still do 15 through 20 damage to the Praetorian. It doesn't, again, it's not damage uh, per turn, it's damage per thing hurting him. As I unplug my headset from my microphone. Okay, that's everyone. Okay, so let's let's have Tira 
destroy the infected node. Lottery? Let's... Uh, do I want you firing? You're kind of overheated. You have 25 hull left, and you're going to lose 8 of it next turn. Let's move Lottery away. And I'm not going to fire with him. I want him to lose some more heat. Oh, I can't really move you where I want to move you, but we'll... We'll move you here. Aegis will move up. Block for Lottery. And we'll heal Trimus. I think this thing fired on Lottery last turn. So Trimus does not have any stacks of corrupted data. Yeah. Corrupted data cannot be cleansed. So uh, we, we couldn't heal the two damage that Lottery has taken. But we would still be able to remove the interference from it. But I'm going to have Trimus fire on this guy. So let's cleanse the interference from him. And heal him a little bit. And now we fire on this guy. As you can see, even if we don't do enough damage to kill him, if we do 21 points of damage, the acid will still do the rest. Okay, so... Let's have Aegis fire here, fire here. Oh, okay, and that lets me let lets lottery fire directly on this uh, acrid. Let's do that and move you away. Uh, Aegis, we can move you. Oh, hold on. So if I oh yeah, I didn't show you this as either. When you are hovering over the movement. The game is very wonderful in that it will highlight enemies when you are moved within an area that you have line of sight to them from. That's so useful. I wish more games did this because I can tell that I do have line of sight to fire on that enemy from one of these uh, three spots. We can see down here, by the way, how much damage that they've suffered. The log for your current turn is displayed down below. Oh, alright, so when we destroy the infected node, you'll note over here that the reinforcements left. All we have to do now is deal with the last remain remaining enemies that were on the board. This is super useful to know. Uh, most missions that have you trying to complete a task do not have endlessly respawning enemies. The few that do, I believe, offer you a way to leave the mission with all your units being within it. At which point, like, uh, it's an area highlighted in orange. When you complete your tasks, you go to that area, and then you leave the mission at that point. So you don't have to ever deal with endlessly respawning enemies unless you really want to, or you're too slow in accomplishing your other objectives. Oh, we haven't seen this guy yet, have we? So we should, we should take a look at him. A Bulwark. The big thing about the Bulwark is that massive amount of armor. He's got six armor with him. His scythe also hits twice for 3 through 4 damage. Not very much against a tank, but that's a, quite a bit of damage. 6 through 8 against um, maybe someone who doesn't have any armor at all. The, by the way, the AI is very good at trying to avoid firing at your tank. With enemies that don't reduce its armor through armor breach, or that give it heat, like the heater was trying to do. Let's move you over here. You'll see, by the way, that red that you see going on this guy. This is because of Lottery's Acid Infuser. Whenever a weapon does damage, or... Yeah, whenever a weapon applies damage to an enemy, that can be zero damage, by the way, as far as I'm aware, 
they'll also get four stacks of corrosion. This does one damage per stack and never expires. It can be cleansed through a heal kit, for example, but normally it wouldn't go away. That explains that eight damage next turn that the bulwark is taking. Tira, let's have you fire on it. And we'll have Aegis finish it off. We haven't actually seen the Needle fire on an enemy yet. The Needle doesn't do much damage, only 6 through 10. It's range of 7 though, which is decent enough. It's only one action point to fire it, which is why you've seen me be able to fire it twice per turn. It applies one internal damage upon dealing, da upon, uh, dealing damage. This does 15% of the target's maximum hit points as a dot effect that it will suffer next turn. In this case, you can see that we hit the Bulwark, and it, it would it's not going to suffer instead of 8 damage next turn, 15 damage next turn. You can apply that uh, internal damage multiple times to a target. Really useful against targets that are very heavily armored, as is the Corrosion on the enemies. Alright, victory everyone! We are in 58 Matter, a Morana, and an Overclocking Kit. Let's take a look at those in our squad. Okay, so should we look at our enemy's weapons? I didn't really look at them very much except for Tira's weapon systems. But you got the general idea of how combat works now, I think. Tribus' weapon, as you can see, does 7 through 9 and fires 3 times at the enemy. If it crits, it does an extra 5 damage with each of the, so, and I think the crit chance is applied with each individual shot, not every single shot. However, it has a 0% chance to crit normally. Tribus has no way to increase his crit through his equipment, but I don't think he has a chance to increase his crit with his upgrades either. We could have given him the adaptive sensors to give this a 40% chance to actually crit with doing an extra probably uh, 2 damage, but I thought it would be better on Tira instead. Anyway, I'm pointing this out because weapons that have crit but no percentage, if you don't have any way to increase that unit's crit, you're never going to see that crit damage increase. He's also got four armor, thanks to his armored plating, which was available. We've seen the needle. I talked about it for uh, the last mission uh, briefly, so we know how good that weapon is. And you saw me using the repair kit. It's very useful for, as, as you've seen, cleansing status effects and also repairing hull. Lottery's Magnetic Cannon, which I didn't explain too much, does decent damage, 10 through 12, and fires twice at a kind of short medium range of 6. It's 25 heat applied to him, that's a pretty decent amount of heat. It also applies 2 stacks of improved interference to the enemy, which reduces their damage by 50%. I don't think anything cares about the amount of stacks of imp inter interference on an enemy. So if it was 1 stack or 20 stacks, it's still 50% weapon damage reduction. He's also got that acid infuser, which I talked about. Really useful for a rapid firing weapon. If we gave that to Trimus, he'd inflict 12 points of corrosion damage to a single target, rather than just 8 that Lottery's inflicting. But we'll leave it on Lottery at the moment. So we earned an overclocking kit. This is used on other allied units. I think it can actually also be used on the unit that possesses it. I think it still works that way, but I get the impression it's not supposed to. It's only one action point to use it, and this is the first item we're seeing that has a cooldown on it. We can only- well actually it's a second, I suppose. We can only use it once every two turns. The repair kit is the same thing, only usable once every two turns. It increases by plus one, I believe the minimum and maximum damage that the target gains. We're going to give that to Aegis. I think it works really well with his needle, because his needle is only one action point, so we can fire the needle once, and then use the, over oh, the overclocking kit on someone. In particular, each one of Trimus's autocannon shots would be improved by plus one every time we're able to use the overclocking kit on him, making this weapon a real beast. So we're going to give it to Aegis. As for the Marana, it also is a two-turn cooldown. It does no damage. It has a 100% chance to crit, with no damage done. We'll explain that uh, in a little bit. 
This range is also 7. Like, why do we care about a 100% crit weapon that does no damage? Well, I'll, I'll tell you in a few seconds. Notice that this does 25 corrosion damage. I'm uh, uh, sorry, applies 25 corrosion upon dealing damage. Remember that a weapon deals damage even if it didn't do any damage to an enemy. So this effectively puts 25 damage uh, per round over time on a target. Combined with the Acid Infuser, that's 29 points of damage. It also applies to Armor Breach to the target, lowering their armor by 2 points and lasts for 2 turns. If you reduce a target's armor into the negative, they take extra damage from all sorts of uh, attacks. We'll give that to Lottery. When you assign weapons to an enemy, uh, to, enemy to a, a squad member, that is beyond their, uh, well, actually any weapons, it goes immediately up on their equipment list. Um, that's not particularly important in any way, I just felt like I, I should mention it. So like, the Marana replaced the Ashen Future as a second item, it's now the second item. Okay, we also have 108 matter. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have available at the moment, if there's anything else I might want. The Kinetic Cannon could be a nice weapon to give to Tira. It's another... Well, actually, this weapon has incredible range at 11 range. That makes it very nice. It also does an extra 15 damage if it crits. And since we gave Tira the Adaptive Sensor, that actually is a... as he has a chance to crit now, 40%. And it will do probably close to 20 damage extra if it hits with it. It applies to the Armor Breach to the target as well. Another good sniper weapon. There's another focal sensor, if we wanted to pick up that and give that to someone for 40% ch crit chance, but I think we'll pass it on that at the moment. A laser drill, decent damage, 22-25, fires once, crit 20, just naturally, is also really nice, but its range is only 3, so you gotta be right up next to something. It also has piercing attack. I. I think that means it ignores all of the enemy's armor, but I don't really know if that's the case. I think that's the case. I think that's the case. The Gyro Stabilizer. It adds 25 min damage to your weapons, but this is, this is important. The minimum damage of your weapons, as you can see, can never exceed the maximum damage of your weapons. It also adds plus 5 to the max damage of your weapons. This would be nice on someone who fires multiple times. Like Lottery, for example. His auto cannon would gain effectively 5 points of damage. He would do 17 points of damage twice. And the Marana would inflict 5 damage whenever we used it, in addition to its corrosion. Would also be good for Trimus, because that would increase by 5 points of damage. Uh, well, I guess technically 7 for his minimum. He'd be doing 12 points of damage. Oh, sorry, 14 points of damage. Uh, three times each shot. And Tira, of course, would gain even more damage with, with it as well. It's a decent weapon. A Crucible can be nice also. This is a heat weapon. It doesn't do much damage by itself. As you can see, it does, in fact, none. But it applies 40 heat to the target. I'm sorry, that's not crit. That's not the case. It applies your current heat to the target, 100% of it, and applies plasma residue to the target, increasing your their heat over time. It also increases your max heat by 40 just for holding on to the weapon. Ooh, that could be nice. The Karius sensor given to Tira to increase her damage even more. I think of all of these, I wouldn't mind locking this Crucible to give it to Trimus, since he tends to overheat a lot. Or the Magnetic Cannon, and giving that to Tira as a second weapon. But we haven't given anything else to Trimus yet, so why don't we lock this? Let's also take a look at Tira really quick. She has enough stuff that she could take an upgrade. Oh, some of these are very nice. So I normally take this upgrade with the Atlas, she'll gain a second move, and but she gains an extra 5 heat at the end of each of her turns. I think we'll probably be giving her that. But let's go ahead first and take a look at what missions are available to us. And we'll do one more mission before we call the session. Ooh. Heavy autocannon. That's a better version of what, uh... Well, it's not a better version. It's a different version than what Trimus currently has. It does four more min points of damage, 
and seven more my, uh, ma six more max points, but it also applies 35 heat, which is uh, 15 more heat to trim us if we fire it with them. It also requires a normal mission to be accomplished. I don't know if we want to do that quite yet. Let's see. That's not going to be helpful to us. Rend Cannon can be a decent weapon as well. What's the range on that? Range 7? Armor Shredder. Very nice. Giving that to... Uh, Trimus. All of his uh, shots apply one armor breach to the target. Proof Sensor. Is also nice. Plus 20% damage. Would be very nice. Oh! Speaking of that, by the way... I mentioned but didn't explain. Why do we care about a 100% crit weapon if it doesn't have any extra crit effects? There are items you can buy or squad upgrades you can find which do special things upon crit. So for example, actually that, um, this for example, this extra crit damage upon receive, upon dealing crit damage for example, every time we fired the Morana, this sensor would give all the weapons that Lottery has an extra 15% uh, crit damage. It wouldn't really help them because we have no way to crit with the Magnetic Cannon. But that is an example of how it would work. If we gave the Morana to Tira, gave her the Cirrus Sensor and dropped maybe the Adaptive Sensors, whenever she would crit with the Ray Gun, she would actually be earning a little bit of crit. So that's why some weapons have a crit chance but have no extra damage done on a crit. There's other things like your squad is healed whenever anyone crits, in which case you want uh you this Morana would make everyone heal whenever we used it, for example. So, things to keep in mind as you're playing through the game. So, this is tempting for the armor shredder and the proof sensor, but I I don't like only 34 matter, and these, they're not the best items in the game. The Arbor Shredder could be useful, but uh, can we do something a little better? Uh, a Repel Assault on, on Normal is going to be really difficult. I don't think I'm ready for that. The Carabin is a decent weapon. 15 through 17 times 2 damage. No heat generated with it. It does have a cooldown of 2 turns. That's tempting. I don't know if we can actually destroy the maintenance station, though, on normal with our current equipment. Maybe we should show you a normal mission early on. Normally, we could wait to do this until halfway through Tier 1, when all the easy missions are lost and, they, and all the missions are normal or hard. I don't know if we can do this so early. Let's do the download data one. Let's do the download data. The acid cannon, we can give that to Lottery, and I can maybe drop his other weapon, although we won't benefit from the acid infuser as much, because we don't have a weapon that's firing twice. We still get to apply 16 corrosion to the target, and this weapon still also implies imp interference to it. We're kind of changing Lottery from a standard debuffer to a corrosion debuffer instead. But I think that will work. And we can give the deployable cooling to Tira, and she'll lose extra heat if I don't move her after she fires, or if she doesn't take her second move. So, with that in mind, we'll go for this mission. And we'll actually take Tira's second move upgrade. Okay. Let's do it.
The source code repository has was disconnected from the network to prevent infection. Manual data retrieval is required. All right, so this is interesting. We immediately have enemies right outside our door, and the moment we move, I think, like, up to here, I think they're all going to activate. So we're going to need to deal with these enemies right now. Oh, as you can see here, we have to download the data. It's somewhere in the map that was generated for us, and we have to stand on the tile to download it. This is not those tiles. This is where we'll need to go to leave the mission. Don't be here for the download. That's not where, that's not what you want to do. All right, so I'm thinking with Aegis, we use our overclocking kit on... They're both good targets. Let's use it on Trimus. We'll fire here to make a hole for Trimus. And we'll move here. Oh, useful to know, there's another enemy. Oh, hey, we have a interactable uh, thing here. So this here repairs eight hole to the player's unit and removes all status effects. Works on a random player's unit within three tile range, has two charges. So you have to be within this range to use it. And it will choose from our units only. Won't heal their units. And it chooses randomly if we have multiple units standing in it. Good to know that we have a free heal basically waiting for us over here. I think it does it at the end of our turn. So... I can't... I really want to hit the heater with the uh, acid, but I can't seem to do it. Ah, that sucks. Okay. Alright, well, let's deal with the heavy spider then. As you can see, we've just woken up all the enemies by firing upon this one. Let's see. I don't think I can kill it with lottery. It also has isolated internals, so it's going to take less damage from acid damage. That's what I try to do do to it. Um. Trimus will kill. I mean, we can kill it if we focus fire on it. So I move you up, you fire. I really don't like the heater. I don't want to be overheated so early in the game. But I also don't want to suffer movement penalties so early in the game. Let's. I mean, we'll have to get super lucky to kill this. But we'll try. Oh, okay. It can still be, be killed. Just have to use the Marana to do it. Okay. Lottery, let's have you come out here. We have more enemies that have activated, and they're right. Oh, we have, we're gonna have to fight through everything to make it to the uh, the download center. I would like to kill this thing before it keeps harassing me more. Oh, Tira has a second move now, by the way. So as you can see, she's able to move twice. I probably don't want her fired upon by this creature. So I think I'll undo that move and move her back here. Oh. 
Okay, so our uh, overclocking kit is off a of cooldown. Let's use it on lottery. Trimus, if I move you here, you might kill the uh, acrid. But you know what? If I move Aegis here, that oh the Marauders on cooldown, Tim. But if we move, uh, I think Lottery can still go here. Yep, and do enough damage to kill it. Didn't quite kill it. Alright, Aegis. Let's have Aegis use the Repair Kit on Tira, which will heal that 6 damage she took, and also purge those negative sass effects from uh, from her. But uh, she still lost her second movement, and she still lost 2 movement, even though the, uh, the prop damage was cleansed from her. Come down here. Wow. And kill the Acrid. Right. One point of damage, thanks to being increased by the Aegis. And then 29 acid damage is enough where our Morana can guarantee we kill an Acrid in one single shot. See the white, uh, the, sorry, that yellow plus sign? That's telling us that we are within range of one of our, like, repair kits, or our overclocking kit, if we wanted to use it on lottery. We gotta find the download link, so we gotta move out quickly. We have only five turns till the enemy starts spawning in. I don't think it's over here. It's not. Okay. There it is. The blue. Broadcasting new directive. Withdraw units from combat. Now, it's not going to be as easy as just walking out in three turns. Because the enemy is spawning enemies in to stop us here in our, uh, well, the room we started in. Units that teleport in cannot be harmed while they're teleporting. But they also cannot attack you. It gives you a round to see what's spawning in and try to deal with it. Or at least, I'm sorry, get ready to deal with the enemy. Tira, can we shoot at this? Critical! Well done. Uh, let's keep you there at the moment. Let's 
so I can't get close enough for the overclocking kit to use it. We may as well fire... Well, let's move back a bit. The reason for this is because it will strike me and then move away, and I want it moving up to attack me instead. We can kill a bulwark in one round with all of our units. And Trimus just shrugs off that damage. Three through four? That does nothing to Trimus, because he's got five armor. So we're going to move up Lottery first, because the Morana has an armor breach effect on it. So it will lower this thing's armor by two. In addition to applying, as you can see, 29 points of corrosion to it. Now we actually have a decent chance of killing it with Trimus. Probably still won't do it. There, and now it's dead. Opposing units count incremented. Alright, we have uh, units teleporting in. We're only getting two of them because this is an easy mission. If this was normal, we would get three to four of them. I'm hoping we can just ignore those and make our way to the exit. We should use the overclocking kits. I can't quite make it out this turn, but next turn we should be able to. Notice that we hit it with the Morana, but because this is a Praetorian and it has its Dominator armor, our acid damage isn't going to inflict 29, it only inflicts 20. We can never inflict more corrosion damage to it. It will still slowly die over three turns, so it's still useful to do. You get points at the end of the game for the more enemies that you kill, so we'll kill that guy. Alright! An acid cannon and deployable cooling. Let's go ahead and assign those to our people. We'll take a look at the next missions that are available, but I think we'll be done at this point. So, uh, Tira is going to gain the deployable cooling. If she has a move left, so if we hit end turn, and she has to move either at all, because we didn't move her even once, or we moved her once, but she still has a second move that we didn't take, she will burn an extra 25 heat at the end of the turn. For the acid cannon... You know, I think we'll give it to Tremis. He doesn't have a second weapon. It'll give me the option to apply even more corrosion to the enemy in case the auto cannon isn't something that I want to use against them. Okay. Let's take a... Oh, first let's take a look over here. We have a new thing I want to point out to you guys. I see what's called a squad upgrade over here. It's the very bottom thing. Do you see the tree node down here? This, um... Uh, this image? This indicates that this is a special upgrade. It's not attached to your units. It's put down into the into this slot. You can have up to four active at any one time, and it applies to everything in your squad. In this case, as you can see, our squad would gain five minimal damage. It's decent, but I think I like the two things I currently have locked at the moment. I do see a cooling kit, which could be useful, but I don't like the... Uh, my, I don't think we're going to run into trouble with heat so early on. So I'm going... Well, ho I'm hoping we don't. So we'll pass on buying that at the moment. 
You'll note now, by the way, that we are about to do the third... Well, we're not going to do the third mission now because I'm going to take a, a small break. We'll be back to do one more mission and then we'll wrap up the session. Uh, but you'll note really quick before I go to compress this part down that the easy missions are no longer around. They are gone. Now, we have to do normal missions or hard missions. Note again that... Well, actually, I suppose now... See, the, our matter, the matter that's available, has greatly increased for us. Instead of 38, it's 105 now. But these missions will be very difficult for us to complete. So I'm going to take a look and see what's available to us. And when we come back, we'll be ready to do another mission. Give me a few seconds, everyone. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm back. The part's been compressed down. It's now the next day. Ugh, just woke up and ate breakfast, and let's get this last mission done for this video. So, I get a chance to talk about weapon upgrades before we go ahead and do a mission, but I think we're going to be trying this one. Notice that this also has an acid cannon, and notice that the acid cannon's, cannon's color is blue. We got an acid cannon in the last mission that we did, but the, this acid cannon is white. The blue acid cannon is basically a level leveled up acid cannon. It's one rank higher. It's better in almost every way than the standard acid cannon. And where it's not better, it's equal to what this was able to do. The white one that we have right here does 3 through 5 damage and 16 corrosion. This blue one does 4 through 8 damage and applies 22 corrosion. So again, it's better. The imp interference is still the same. I don't think there's any difference there. Lasts for three turns. Reduces weapons by 50%. Still 100% chance to crit at range 7 with 20 heat applied. And this one... Oh! The heat's also less. Uh, I didn't realize that could be the case. That's pretty amazing. So this as a cannon is 25 heat. Uh, two interference. Same as the other one. Lasts three turns. 50% weapon reduction. Range 7. So, I think we want that blue acid cannon if we can get it. We get some thermal ammo, which isn't going to be really too useful for us. We'll probably just vendor it. And a heavy auto cannon, which we might give to Trimus. We'll see. 35 heat is a lot of heat to give Trimus this early in the game. Uh, anyway, yeah, we also get 94 matter, which is a decent amount. The only... The only other, I think there were two ones, well, there were two other options that tempted me. There was Destroy the Fabricators, it's a hard mission, but we get three blue weapons out of it. They're all decent weapons, too. Or we could maybe go up here for Eliminate the Infective Node, which would give us some Repair Gel, which is a pretty decent item to get. And a Kinetic Cannon, which we could give to Tira. But I think we'll come down here because it's a, a normal mission, it'll be our first normal mission together. We get a blue Acid Cannon, which is an upgrade for the white one. We might use the heavy auto cannon, and 94 matter is nothing to scoff at. Besides, we get to take a look at another new mission type. Let's go ahead and start. Actually, let me double check this to make sure I've done everything I want to do over here. Okay, and I have. Corrupted units gained a bridge hedge in this sector. Destroying this base will allow you to reallocate some of the uninfected units. Alright everyone, so it looks like we can't go south through the wall, and we can't go north through the wall. I'm assuming that we're going to have to go out here to the left. So, this mission is a little different than the infected node, although there's still an infected object here. We have to find and destroy all infected maintenance objects, there's only one left. That will be an infected repair station. Near it will be a... I don't know how to describe it. There'll be a station which is producing new units every third turn. We need to destroy the repair station in order to stop the enemy reinforcements from spawning. Okay, so, oh wait, and we won't be afflicted with interference this time around either. So our weapons still function at 100% uh, efficiency. Alright, well let's get started. So, let's have Aegis begin by using his overclocking kit. And we'll use it on Trimus to start. Then we're gonna run him up here and fire at the store to make another hole for us. Actually, maybe this one would be better. 
lottery can move on up. No enemies in this room. Okay, good. So we can rush through this room without alerting any enemies. Uh, shame I moved myself here because I, I stopped Tira from entering this chamber. There's probably another doorway to the north because I can see that there's a wall here. I can't quite see if there's no... I don't think there's any X's, but do you see this wall? How this is like a split going up and to the right? This hints that there's more up here. So we're gonna move Tira up in that direction. And Trivis catches up. Okay, the maintenance station activated. And when it did so, is that right? What is this called? Base station? Fabricator, sorry. The Fabricator activated and produced a new unit. And we were lucky enough. Actually, not lucky enough, I suppose, because this is always the case. We are now able to see where it is actually located. So our choices are to come down here to this room and possibly eliminate any enemies that are waiting to wake up down there. Or work our way over here to get the Fabricator. We only have nine turns, and this is far away. So we're going to try to make a beeline right for that Fabricator. Okay, this area is blocked off from us. We can't actually get into this room from this side until we destroy the walls. The game wants us to go out this direction instead. Tira. I don't want to move her too close to that enemy, or it will activate. I think this might be a safe place. So we're going to fire on this wall to open it up for us. Now, these enemies aren't active yet. They'll wicked in one more turn. This guy is active. He was just produced. The AI will tend to keep him around here until he gets more and more forces and then hunts you down in order to try to guard these structures, or at least that tends to be the case. I also see, by the way, on screen that we have another special uh, object. You can see this light blue glow here. There is a... Uh, a cooler somewhere around here. If you end your turn within its effect, more heat will be dropped from your units. This one also applies its effect to the enemy as well. Okay, the enemies to the south of us have activated. If I want to make my way towards this, I'm a, I will need to either fight through these units to do it while trying to avoid these ones, or, or we head out through this door and hope we can reach this quick enough. I think we're going to stick with my original plan and try to fight these enemies off first. We're going to use our, our overclocking kit on Lottery. Because if I can move Lottery here and fire on that Acrid with the Morana. That should be enough damage to guarantee it's dead. Yep, dies on its turn. Now there's some new enemies down here we haven't seen yet. We have an Orion, that's this creature, and a Repair Bot, that's this one. Uh, Repairman, sorry. Repairman has a double move, it has a Corruptor, which doesn't do too much damage, but it does inflict more heat on the enemy, but not that much extra heat either. It's annoying, though, because it has a Repair Kit. Its Repair Kit heals an incredible amount of hull, and also removes all status effects. The Repairman doesn't have any armor, though, and only 30 hit points, so if we can get a chance to kill it, we will definitely make the attempt.
because I just blocked Tira off from contributing in that fight. Let's have Trimus come up into this direction. And we'll just end our turn. Oh my goodness, there's so many enemies in there. Four other enemies. I didn't realize there'd be five total enemies in that location. Okay, so Lottery has been damaged. I want Trimus up in this area to help us fight these enemies. I guess we should take a look at the Orion as well briefly. The right weapon does not do too much damage, only one through two. It has a good range though, at range nine. It applies 20 heat upon hitting it, one of our bots, and it applies 7 lingering heat as well. For the next two turns, every single stack of lingering heat increases our heat by one. I don't think you can cleanse lingering heat either once it's applied to you. Whenever this creature is damaged, 10 heat is applied back to the thing that damaged it as well. This means that if Trimus was to use his assault rifle, on the Orion, he would suffer 30 heat points because that weapon attacks him three times in the round. It's going to be tricky to kill this because there's a repairman there as well. We're going to try to ignore the group to the south and fight through this group to reach this uh, repair station. If I can. I don't think I need to repair Lottery this turn. Okay, let's deal with this bot now. 25 hit points left. It's gonna suffer three damage. There's 22 life left. Trimus can probably destroy it when he goes, so we'll have our other bots focus on a different heavy spider. I don't want to block line of sight to the other heavy spider though, but I would, wouldn't mind Trimus ending his turn here. Uh, lottery? I think if I move you here, you can't be hit by the Orion. I don't think we'll kill this heavy spider this turn. But we're gonna take the f shot at it anyway. Oh! We did! Oh, holy crap! We got a the perfect crit. Exactly as much damage as we needed to inflict on the enemy. With your second move, move you over here. Trimus moves up. Can we... So we could put the as, uh, acid on the Orion. The repairman, though, would just heal it. It might be better for us to kill the repairman first. So I think we'll be attempting to do that. But I also want to get everyone into this room. It's going to be difficult to do based on where this heavy spider is located as well. Lottery also still has prop damage on him. 
So he has a penalty to his movement. Trimus has the same thing on him. So it's going to be tough to get him into, into this room. And even if I repair him, we still he still does not recover his movement for this turn. Okay, let's use an overclocking kit first on... I would like to use it on Tira, so we could maybe get a... Well, we'll have to crit no matter what on the repairman, unless Lottery takes the shot. And if Lottery's moving up here, this means we have Bulwarks to worry about now. How much damage do you do? 8 through that plus 10? I think Trimus can kill the repairman if he's down here, especially if we use the overclocking kit on him. So let's do that. Move you down here, Trimus. No! Failed! One hit point left. That was really unlucky. We got two nines. Okay. Well, too late now. I really don't want to fire on that with someone else, but we may have to. No, I, th I think you go for the heavy spider. Go for the heavy spider. Got to get into this room and destroy this repair station in six turns, or that's that you're gonna lose. That's all there is to it. Lottery is getting very, very dangerously close to overheating. Let's uh, move him up. Uh, actually, we're going to move... See, where can you move? Here? I don't want this guy to fire and move away again without a Morana's acid damage on him. And I can't quite get that damage on him at the moment. Let's move you up... And Trimus is now pinned between these creatures. I'll have to destroy this wall if I want Trimus to circle around. And I think, Tim, you do want to do that. So move. We have to, we have to fall back one turn. Lottery has to... I want Lottery to move up uh, here. He's not going to fire because I don't want him getting even more heat. So destroy this. That's all we're going to do with you. Trimus will end up moving here. Oh, right, we have an acid cannon. We should fire that. That will now slowly guarantee this bulwark dies over the course of the next few turns. Lottery, we move you over here, and we put the acid uh, corrosion on the acrid to make sure it dies. Aegis, you're badly hurt now, but I don't want to heal you quite yet. We're going to use the overclocking kit on, I think, 
Kira this time. You'll help that thing die a little faster, and we'll get you away. Kira will help. Guarantee that one dies this turn. Move you away. Trimus will use your acid cannon again and get you blocking Aegis for us. Looks like the Orion was healed by the Repairman bot. Which itself is running up here to act to get repaired from that repair station. So we want to stop that. Uh, Aegis would need to be... Is the only one, I think? No. Uh, Tira can take the shot if she moves here. Let's do it. It has to be here. I don't think I can ignore the bulwark. Trimus has a lot of heat on him. I need him to get rid of some of that heat. So does Lottery, so I need I don't want either of them to fire this round. Aegis has to heal himself. He's taking a lot of damage. So let's do that to start. I think if I move you here, you'll be safe. You'll still be fired upon. Let's let's do it. I guess, Trimister, you're just going to be overheated. I, I need to get that those hit points down a little bit more. So it's like it's 10 extra heat that you recover if you don't take any actions with your action points. Okay, we need to kill this. We've got two rounds to do it. The bulwark is dead on its turn. We're, we're so overheated as well. We might be losing several units here. And ev again, every three turns, the character is going to make another heavy spider for us to worry about as well. Let's use our overclocking kit on lottery to start. Probably destroy the repair station this round. It's very tempting to do it, although we'll be heavily uh, damaged in retaliation of that. Maybe even losing Tira in the process. Getting over here would be great to get our heat lowered as well. I just don't know if I can handle so many heavy spiders. I don't think I can kill two heavy spiders in one round. It'll be very close. We could try doing that one at uh, once. 
That would be two needle shots. And Trimus firing on one of them. Tira and Lottery firing on the other. And then we still need to move towards the cooling over here. Okay, we'll give it a try. Didn't crit. That's terrible. So now it's definitely not happening at this point. Uh, Trimus. Okay, that'll have to do. Tira, we have to get you over here to the coolant. And we I this turn I need to destroy this or we're getting reinforcements spawning. So the, that's the most important thing. I have to destroy this repair station this turn. Nothing else matters. Well, actually, everything else matters as well. But the most important thing, again, is getting rid of that repair station. Trimus, let's have you run over here. Just outside range. Lottery can do it. Lottery can do it. But Lottery's better using his uh, Medic Cannon to damage one of the spiders to keep Medic Interference on them to reduce the damage that they do. Aegis can do it if he fires twice, but I don't really want him to do that because I want him repairing this round. Let's move you up and you'll take the shot. Tira. Do I kill this spider or weaken this one? I think we'll weaken this one. And then we desperately try to make it over to the coolant, uh, the cooler that we see over here. Alright, Tira, you don't have a second move, so you're not going to benefit from the cool, uh, the, what you call cooler that we gave you. Uh, let's have Aegis. Well, hold on. The heavy spider can the heavy spider can probably be killed with a single. Well, no, it's gonna take it's gonna take two hits. All right, lottery. If I move you here, we could fire on this with the acid. But I I also need to destroy the fabricator. That's now the next uh, most important thing to destroy. Why don't we move? Can I survive? We're, we're so over... So, Lottery, as you can see, is taking six damage already because he's overheated. He's taking seven more um, lingering heat damage. We This thing is getting really annoying. Let's, uh... We, we have to repair him. Especially if, we're gonna, uh, use him, if I'm going to fire using him next turn. Uh, or, or even this turn. Trimus, can you... Hmm. 
We'll have Tira begin working the Orion. Tim, I think it's worth just destroying it. Alright, we're badly hurt. Tear is almost dead with eight hit points left and she's overheating. Um, she was property damaged again, so she doesn't get a second move, so she still can't she doesn't benefit from deployable cooling unless I don't move her at all. Lottery needs to cool down. We need to move him over here and not take any actions with him. Aegis, why don't we use the overclocking kit? on Trimus. I have to move you to use it. So let's fire there. That will make sure that spider dies. And then Trimus fire on this spider. Kira, I need to fire with you. Everyone tries to cool down a bit. Oh my goodness, dear, with one hit point left. Let's go ahead and repair her. Okay, I think we can kill this in one round of fire, even though we're going to be overheated. The game should end after we do this. I did that in the wrong order. Lottery should have fired on it first. Because the Morana reduces its armor by two points, and then every shot Trivus fired would have been an extra two points of damage. Uh, in any case, we did manage to do it without losing a unit. It was very close. Whew! And that is a normal mission. <laughs> that is a normal mission. Hard has even more enemies, and so it's uh, very tricky to do a hard mission so early on in your campaign. So we earn 94 matter, some thermal ammo, a heavy auto cannon, and an acid cannon. An upgraded, an upgraded basically, uh, version of what Trimus was currently using. There's no reason for us to use the white version if we have the blue version instead. And I don't want to give these this old acid cannon to anyone else. So we'll, we'll give this to you, Trimus. And then we'll break down the old acid cannon. Do I give Trimus the heavy auto cannon? I think we've seen. I think we've seen that it's uh it's going to be really tough <laughs> to keep the heat down on Trimus. So uh, I don't think we'll give this to him at the moment. We'll hold on to it though. I won't break it down for its uh its materials. Now it's very difficult to overheat most enemies in the game. The developer has said that he would like to revisit how he did heat for the enemies that we're fighting, like lower their heat thresholds or something, but he, he's not, he doesn't have time to do it at the moment. Thermal ammo is not that useful to us in that regard. It is very difficult to overheat an enemy. But that said, there's no penalty for equipping thermal ammo on someone. And someone who has, he could make many attacks in a single round would benefit from the thermal ammo the most. We'll go ahead and just give it to Trimus at the moment. We don't need to break it down. I suppose Aegis could also have the heavy auto cannon at the moment. Okay, so what's next? Actually, I want this in a different order. We have 158 matter. It's tempting 
to produce one of these. The Crucible is something I would give to Trimus or Lottery. Pro probably Trimus. Again, 40 max heat is actually very nice. And uh, then I could maybe drop his uh, his auto cannon for the heavy auto cannon instead. The Crucible also, when Trimus is overheated, like let's say he has 100 heat, he could use the Crucible to apply 100 heat to an enemy and give them two plasma residue, and suddenly it's not so difficult to overheat the enemy. It also would work well with his thermal ammo. It's very tempting to build this, actually. The armor plating could also be useful for Aegis, allowing him to actually kind of act as a, another tanky unit. We could also spend that matter on upgrades for our for these units. Um, I wouldn't mind getting more hit points with Aegis. The second move is also nice. And for Trimus, minus five heat at the end of the turn could also be really useful. I think we will build the Crucible, though. Actually, before we build the Crucible, let's see what's what we're fighting for over here. This is the type of mission we just got done, and it has two decent weapons on them. That's tempting. What else is here? Oh! Uh, well, it's a hard mission. A7 ammo is not bad. An upgraded thermal ammo. Enemy units gain 8 heat per size effect each turn. They can, I guess... Is that per stack of each status effect, or is that just 8 heat per different status effect on them? I think it's per different status effect. This could be nice, too. I do like seeing another blue acid infuser. There is a crucible here. It's not the blue crucible that we can craft, but it's still a decent thing to have. A lance could be nice. Yeah, these are all decent here, too. I just, I don't know if we can handle a hard mission. Well, anyway, uh, we're going to stop the recording at this point. So why don't I actually think about what I want off screen? And then when we come back, we'll go ahead and make whatever purchase we're going to spend our matter on. And then we'll go ahead and do a mission. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys like this. I, I really like mainframe defenders. Uh, I really, really like this game. I like the different weapons. I like how they're all used. I like the different squad baits you can take with you. I like how you have to choose which mission you want to do. It feels tough on normal as well. We came very close to losing two people uh, in that mission that we had just done. I like it. I, li I like this game. It's, it's amazing. Uh, and if we did lose someone, by the way, uh, they have, I think they do less damage. And you can repair them for 25 matter to get rid of that uh, damage stats effect. So you and you can make a comeback from it. Uh, I beat when I beat the game with a whole different squad recently, I lost 3 people in one mission and my last guy just barely survived, but he did survive and I spent 75 matter fixing all 3 of my injured people and I was able to claw back from that and still win that run. It was very fun. All right, I'm babbling. Thank you all for watching, and we'll do another one of these, so I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching, everyone.